All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to welcome everybody to Farmington Baptist Church where we'll get started. Uh, no, I am not preaching, but we do have a little special treat this morning. Uh, Miss Anna Kate Cherry is going to be getting baptized, so Brother Ben's uh, getting prepared for that. Uh, some important announcements. Uh, if you didn't get a bulletin, uh, you need to pay close attention to these. Last Wednesday, our church voted to give $5,000 to Eastern Kentucky Flood Relief. And there's a link in there if you'd like to give some more. Uh, there's a good uh, link to, uh, in order to give that. Let's just remember to continue to pray uh, for those uh, in that region of our state. And another important thing uh, that was voted on is the Wednesday night service is going to be moved from 7 o'clock to 6.30 uh, to just help out with getting kids uh, back home and in bed uh, for school. So, um, and Wednesday night, Brother Ben has a new study he is starting called The First Steps for New Christians by Paul Chapel. And everyone's invited to that. Of course, we have youth classes and, and children classes uh, for that. Operation Christmas Child, don't forget to be packing uh, shoe boxes. Uh, we'll be collecting boxes from October 16th uh, through November 16th. Um, and for all Sunday school teachers and church workers, uh, there's going to be a uh, equipped church training at First Baptist in Paducah. Uh, if you haven't been to that, those are always uh, really good. They always have a lot of good little sessions uh, for your uh, area that you work in and serve in for the church. And then September 2nd through the 4th, of course, is Kids Camp. Uh, and there's still a sign-up sheet in the foyer uh, and packet of information. If you uh, have any questions on that, uh, see Miss uh, Heidi Williams. Uh, but I believe now we're going to go... Uh, straight into the uh, baptistry, and so I hope Brother Ben comes out. We're proud of this young girl this morning. This is Anna Kate Cherry. And a few weeks ago after church, she asked to talk with me. And, and uh, I was able to talk with her. And she told me how she, uh, uh, several days before that, had been with her mom. And, and they'd been talking about the Lord. And she's a very, very smart girl. And uh, been, been under conviction. And, and there at home outside of her house, she had prayed and asked the Lord to come into her heart. And I talked with her about that. And, and I could tell it was the, uh, the real deal. And she's very sincere. Even got emotional telling me about it back in the, uh, after the service few weeks ago and uh, so we're thankful the Lord has saved her and then she came down a few weeks ago now that she's been saved and I wanted to follow the Lord in baptism and become a member of our church we're thankful for her good to see all her family that's with us today and we're so thankful for the Lord working in her life I'm going to pray and so you pray as I pray and let's pray for the Lord to bless uh, Anna Kate Father, we're so thankful for, uh, for Miss Anna Kate this morning. Lord, thankful for that. A few weeks ago, she looked to Jesus and asked the Lord to save her and forgive her and to come into our life. Lord, we're thankful that you love us all and thankful uh, that she was saved. And Lord, now she comes to be baptized and let everybody else know uh, that she's been saved. She's a believer and to become a part of this church. We pray you'd bless her, Lord. Thank you for our family that love her and take such good care of her. And we pray you'd bless all of them. Be with her in the days ahead. I know that you'll use her to do great things for the Lord. We pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. In obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and upon your profession of faith, and under the authority of Farmington Baptist Church, I baptize thee, Anna Kate Cherry, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And all God's people say it. Amen. Amen. You did good, girl. All right. All right. Baptism is always a great way to begin the service. And now we're going to sing and worship the Lord. So, Brother Greg, you and the praise team come and lead us, if you will.
All right, good to see you this morning. It's already, already been a good service, hasn't it? If you would stand up and uh, join us in singing The Unclouded Day. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded day. Tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me of a home where my friends have gone. Oh, they tell me of that land far away where the tree of life in eternal bloom sheds its fragrance through the unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day, oh, the land of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me that he smiles on his children there, and his smile drives their sorrows all away. And they tell me that no tears ever come again In that lovely land of unclouded day Oh, the land of cloudless days Oh, the land of an unclouded day Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise me of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Amen. Amen. You sound good this morning. Uh, help us in singing uh, the next song, You Are My All in All. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God. In my cross, my shame rising again. I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of Your name, 
Amen. Glad you could be here this morning. Those who couldn't, some are joining us on the Facebook Live, I'm sure. And you can watch later on, uh, on Facebook or YouTube. It's good to have a lot of visitors here this, uh, this morning. Uh, my sister and nephew from Michigan are, are visiting. And I was going to call on my nephew to pray, but instead, I'm going to call on Jamie Kendall's brother, Adam, who's also here visiting with us. Adam Kendall, would you let us in a word of prayer, please? Amen. All right, help us in singing Victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning of his precious blood's atoning then i repented of my sins and won a victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me Punch me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. How he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He saw me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me Amen. Amen. As we finish up our song services this morning, join us in the song, Lord, I Need You. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my Oh God, how I need 
coming up to uh, bring our message to us this morning. We're going to be in the book of uh, John, the Gospel of John this morning. I hope you have your Bibles with you today. John chapter number 4, the first two verses. John chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Is I want to think about this thought, following Jesus. Following Jesus. You can leave your ribbon here in your Bible. John chapter 4, verses 1 and uh, verse number 2. It's interesting, this has taken place, you notice, right after John 3. Uh, the famous verse in the Bible, John 3, 16, Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus and all that's going on in Judea. And now we find this sort of summary statement after John 3, 16. John chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard, that, notice what it says, that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time to gather together, Lord, the worship, the fellowship, uh, Lord, the Sunday school hour to study your word uh, together, Lord, and now the preaching of the word. I pray you'd bless each part of this service. I pray as the word goes out, Lord, it would speak to hearts. You know every person that's here, Lord. You know how we stand before you. And I pray the word of God would be the hammer that smashes the rock into pieces as it speaks to our hearts today. Uh, Lord, we pray Jesus will be lifted up. In his name we pray. Amen. All right, following Jesus, a verse I'm convinced most people do not realize John chapter 4, 1 and 2 is in the Bible. I don't know that I've ever heard a sermon on it. I've talked about it in lessons before and I never really heard a sermon on it, but it's a great verse full. Now you're going to say, what in the world are you going to preach on here? But there's a lot in this verse, so we're going to chew on it for a while. And I think it'll be a blessing to you. I want us to pull out three words in this verse. Three words right there in verse 1 and talk about the three words. I want you to see, number one, the Bible says Jesus made 
disciples. The idea there, he made. He made what made disciples. I want you to think about that, how Jesus made disciples. I want you to see number two, Jesus uh, baptized those disciples. So we're going to talk about the word made. We're going to talk about the word de- uh, baptized. And then I want you to see number three, the word more. Jesus made so many disciples. So many folks were getting baptized. It was even more than that great and mighty preacher, John the Baptist. So we're going to think about the word made, the word baptized, and the word more this morning. Let's look at it and think about it. You notice the Bible says Jesus made disciples. Now the word disciple, uh, it's used 355 times in the New Testament. We'll talk about it some. And What does the word disciple mean? Most people, if you ask them, they'll say, well, that's referring to that, that special group of 12 people that Jesus had, the, the 12 disciples. But that's really not right. The word disciple means a, a pupil, a student, a learner, someone who is mentored by another. You're being mentored by someone, you're their disciple. My favorite definition is just a simple one, a follower. If you're a disciple of someone, you're a follower of them. You're learning from them. You're following their teaching and their example. So Jesus made followers. He's making students. There's many people, multitudes of people, the Bible says, throughout all the land that are becoming followers of Jesus. You see, the word doesn't mean just the 12, the apostles. You might want to write in the margin Luke chapter 6 and verse 13. The Bible says that Jesus in Luke 6 and verse 13, He called unto Him His disciples, and of them He chose 12 and named them apostles. Jesus had many disciples, hundreds if not thousands. We'll talk about that one on the last one. Jesus had multitudes of disciples and out of that multitude of disciples, the Bible says, he ordained 12 to be apostles. So yes, Jesus had 12 special people, the 12 apostles, but he had many followers, many people who were students of Jesus who were following his example. The word's a common word we find in history. Uh, Aristotle was a disciple of Plato. When Aristotle got older, Alexander the Great was a disciple of Aristotle. John the Baptist, the Bible says, had disciples. He had people that learned from John's example that followed John. And Jesus, just like all those others, he gathered multitudes of people who became followers of Jesus. All right, Brother Ben, that's that's pretty simple. Jesus had all these people that followed him, that were learning from him, listening to him. How do you become a disciple of Jesus? How do you become a follower? Brother Ben, today in 2022, if I want to be a disciple, I don't see Jesus anywhere. Of course, he's went back to heaven at the right hand of the throne of God. How can I be a disciple today? Well, you'll notice, look right above verse 1, and what's the last verse in verse 36, right there together, back up just one verse before verse 1, rewind, and, and John 3, verse 36, the Bible says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. How do you become a disciple of Jesus? You've got to believe in Christ. You've got to become a believer. You've got to come to that point in your life that you say, I realize I need God in my life. I realize that I'm a sinner. My life is a mess. My life has been wrecked by sin. I need something besides myself. I need something I can't supply myself with. And you turn to Jesus. You look to Jesus and you cry out in faith. You trust Jesus. You believe that Jesus is is the Savior. That's how you become a disciple, by faith. Years ago, there was a man by the name of, uh, of, of Lew Wallace. And, and uh, if you love Civil War history, you might recognize his name. He was a Union general. Uh, he actually was at the Battle of Shiloh. Wasn't a very good general. But after the, he survived the war, and after the war, he met up with one of his old uh, uh, army buddies, one of his old officer buddies, and they were talking, and they got to talking about religion. And this buddy wasn't a Christian. Matter of fact, he was an atheist. 
And, and this buddy and, and Lou Wallace began to talk about Jesus and, and Lou Wallace was convicted and he wanted to answer them but he didn't know how. And they left and went on about their, their day and Lou Wallace went on about his life and he said, you know, I, I, I just need to do something. I need to try to convince my buddy, I need to try to convince the world who Jesus really is. And he had a remarkable idea. He said, if I write a book about Jesus, now this is before TV, before the internet, before uh, radio, all there is as far as, you know, the only thing close to social media is, is books and paper. And he said, if I, if I write a book and title it The Life of Jesus, or what the Bible says about Jesus, atheists and agnostics, people, they'll never read it. And he said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write an, a, a, an action book. I'm going to write an adventure book. I'm going to have chariot races in it. I'm going to have battles of warships on the ocean in it. And I'm going to make my hero is going to be this Jewish prince by the name of, of Judah. And this, this, this prince Judah, I'm going to make it it's set during the life of Jesus. And throughout Judah's life, at crucial moments, he's going to run into Jesus. And he's going to start out as a skeptic. He's going to start out as somebody who doesn't believe in Jesus. But he's going to see Jesus as he gives a sermon on the mount. He's going to be there when Jesus heals people. He's going to see the love and compassion of Jesus. He's going to see as Jesus is arrested and Jesus dies on the cross. And then Judah is going to become a Christian. And of course the Judas, Judah Ben-Hur. You may remember the Charlton Heston movie from 1959. The most popular book best-selling book that was written in the 19th century. And he wrote that, not to just be a good book to read or a good movie later, a book to turn into a movie. But if you've seen it, it's all about Jesus. And he was trying to get people to realize, if you'll take a look at who Jesus is, if you'll see the love of Jesus, he loved everybody, the, the rich, the poor, the lepers, everybody. Jesus, for God so loved the world. If you'll listen to the teachings of Jesus, never a man spake like this man. If you'll see what Jesus actually had to say, if you'll look at the power and the miracles of Jesus, you take a look at the Bible and read about this man named Jesus, you'll want to be a follower of Jesus too. You begin and, and take a look, pick up the Gospel of John and read through the Gospel of John and you'll want to become a Christian too. You'll want to be a follower of Jesus. How do we become a follower? We realize that we come to that point, I believe Jesus is the Savior. I believe Jesus is the Messiah. And I want Him to be my Savior. For by grace are we saved. How? Through faith. Jesus, I believe. I'm trusting you. I, I believe that you're the Savior. You're my Savior. You are the Son of God. God, and I'm going to follow you with my life. D Jesus made disciples. We become a disciple by faith. Now let me say this real quick before I move on. A disciple is a follower, right? Many of you say, well, preacher, that happened to me years ago. I remember it was at this church, it was at another church in this county or another county that I trusted Jesus. Brother Ben, I became a follower of Jesus but here's the thing in John 8 verse 31. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you're my disciples indeed. What's a disciple? A follower. Don't you follow Jesus half-hearted. Don't you follow Jesus hit and miss. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you're my disciples indeed. If you're going to follow Jesus, if he saved you, you follow him wholeheartedly. You follow him, you get in a church, and you be faithful in that church. You get in the word. You make God number one in your life. Make Jesus not just your savior, but he's your savior and your what? Your Lord. What's the word Lord mean? But if you say Jesus is your Lord, you're saying, Jesus, you're my boss. That's what the Bible says. If you continue in my word, if he's really your Savior, you make sure he's your boss. You follow him in the church. You follow his teachings. You keep on following Jesus. We're saved by faith. That's the beginning. And then we keep on all the days of our Christian life following Jesus. Jesus made Many disciples, multitudes of people put their faith and trust in Jesus and began to follow him. But then I like what it says. This verse is so rich. The Bible says Jesus made many disciples. People got saved. They began following Jesus in their life. And then notice the wording very carefully. He made and baptized 
disciples. What's he talking about? The second word, baptized. Once people have been saved, once they became a follower of Jesus, then they were baptized. Then they were baptized to let everybody else know they were a follower of Jesus. You might want to write in the margin right here, Romans chapter 3 and verse, uh, excuse me, Romans chapter 6 and verse 3. Romans 6 and verse 3, where the Bible says we're baptized into Jesus, literally baptized unto Jesus, baptized with relationship to Jesus is what that means, baptized into Jesus. It's a Greek word, S, E, I, S, baptized with relationship to. Our baptism is a baptism of identification. You know, it's like this. When I was a kid, dad had a lot of cows and, uh, you know, it'd come a big rain like we had this past week and, and I... Brother Rayburn, I, I sympathize with him because it was the same way with us. We'd have a big rain and the creeks would flood. They'd wash out uh, the fences and the cows would get out and go on somebody else's property. But what Daddy did, every one of David Stratton's cows, we'd get them up and we'd work them and we'd run the cows through. We had a set up there in the, one of the big tobacco barns. We'd run them through and there on the end we had a, uh, some, some gates and then a head catcher. We'd run those cows into that head catcher and Dad would put a tag in their ears. Every one of dad's cows had a cattle tag, cow tag in its ear. It was a certain shape, it was a certain color, it had a certain number on it. It had those tags in it. And so that cow, he might f- figure out, well, the, the creek's washed out and I can get across the creek and the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence and the cow goes across the, the creek on the neighbor's property and the neighbor could say, hey, that cow's my cow. But dad could say, oh no, look in that cow's ear. That tag identifies that cow that it belongs to David Stratton. It was all about identification. The very same way with baptism. We're baptized unto Jesus. Our baptism identifies us as a follower of Jesus. Miss Anna Kate got saved the moment she was at her house and the moment that she cried out to Jesus, the very moment she asked Jesus to save her, she was born again. She passed from death to life. She became a new creature in Christ. She didn't get saved now. She got saved several weeks ago. But by getting baptized, what well, she's identifying with Jesus. She's letting everybody else else know she's publicly being identified letting everybody else know that she's a child of God baptism identifies you with Jesus identifies you as a Christian it identifies you with the death burial and resurrection why did I put her all the way under the water because the Bible says Jesus was placed all the way in a rock a grave of rock he was immersed he was overwhelmed by that grave but he didn't stay in that grave he came out Three days later. And so we baptize people showing the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. As they're uh, baptized, they're, it's like they're buried, but then raised with Jesus to walk in newness of life. It's all about identification. Let me show you. I often talk about doctrine on Wednesday night, but let me just show you something that's really cool here. You notice at John 4 verse 1, the wording... Jesus made and baptized. Now, it's kind of like, remember I talked about the Dukes of Hazard. Brother Jamie loves this quote too. Keep it between the ditches. There's two ditches right here. There are some who'd like to swap the order. And they do that. They would like it to say Jesus baptized people and then later on down the road he made them a disciple. And so they'll baptize babies. But that's not what it says, does it? There's no example of infant baptism in the Bible. That's why Baptists don't baptize babies. When we baptize somebody, they've got to be first made a disciple, then... They get baptized. You notice the order again very clearly. Jesus made them a disciple. They got saved. They became a follower. And then they were baptized. So it's not they got baptized. Then when they got old enough to understand, they were made as, nope, that's one ditch on the other side. And then some people would like to swap out the word and with the word by. Jesus made disciples by baptizing them. That's not what it says here. That's a ditch on the other side of the road. They didn't get made a disciple by baptism, did they? They were made a disciple and they were already a disciple then. You see why? 
Brother Ben, that's why I, I see the light bulb start. Why do Baptists do what we do? It's not because Granddaddy did that. It's because the Word of God compels us to do those things. They were made a disciple and they were already a disciple. Then they got baptized. It's not the baptism made them a disciple. No, they're already a disciple. And the baptism let everybody else know they were a disciple. One other real quick thing on the doctrine. Verse 2 is great too. Because Jesus never baptized anybody. The Bible says, but his disciples. God set some in the church, first apostles. The church is the pillar and ground of the truth. God receives glory in the church. The disciples baptize as a church. There's a church here in the Gospels. The church didn't begin on the day of Pentecost. The church is right here. And the church did the baptizing. That's why we don't baptize people during the week. That's why I just don't go on if I lead somebody to the Lord, baptize them. It, you'll notice very clearly, I do this intentionally, every time from Mount Pisgah to East Hickman to Farming and Baptist Church, every time I baptize someone, you'll always hear me say those words, won't you? Under the authority of the church. The baptism, the church ordinance. The church was baptizing people. The Bible's full of doctrinal truth. So we find Jesus made disciples. People are getting saved. They're following Jesus. Jesus is becoming their Lord and Savior. Then, once they're saved... They're following the Lord in baptism to identify with Jesus, to identify with His resurrection, to identify with His church. Then the third word, more. The Bible says, John chapter 4 and verse 1, Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Now John was a great preacher. The Bible says that all of Jerusalem... And Judea came out to hear John preach. No telling how many people were saved under the ministry of John the Baptist. But as great as John was, he was just the forerunner, wasn't he? He, he said, I'm not even worthy to tie the shoes of Jesus. Jesus made more. Jesus was greater. The, by how many disciples did Jesus make? I, I don't know. The Bible talks several times about great multitudes that followed Jesus. When Jesus fed the 5,000, that was just 5,000 men. There were women and children there as well. And I know probably not all those people were saved. Not all of them were real disciples. But he made multitudes of disciples. And you look at the disciples that Jesus made. Look at the people who are following Jesus. It's amazing. Somebody might say, well, it's just the common people. It's just the everyday average people. But it's all sorts of people. You've got Nicodemus, who's a very educated man. Nicodemus, who's a ruler of the Jews. and He becomes a follower of Jesus. He's there and helps take Jesus' body off the cross. But it's not just regular folks. It's not just educated, respectable people. You've got Zacchaeus, who's a very rich man. But he's a scoundrel. He, he's a, got a terrible reputation. Nobody likes this guy. But Jesus loved everybody. And Jesus met the need in Zacchaeus' life. And Zacchaeus came down out of that sycamore tree. And he became a follower of Jesus. You might say, well, well, brother Ben, it was just men that were following Jesus. Oh no, read your Bible. Uh, you might want to write in the margin Luke chapter 8, 2 and 3, where the Bible mentions three of the many women who followed Jesus. Joanna, Susanna, and Mary Magdalene. All sorts of people. Well, well it was just Jews that were following Jesus. No, Matthew chapter 8 talks about a Roman centurion who came and talked to Jesus, was a follower of Jesus. John talks about later on in the Gospel of John, the, the Greeks who came and glorified God because of Jesus. Jesus came for everybody. Indeed, the woman at the well is there. And remember, these are Samaritans. The Jews hated Samaria. They hated Samaria so much that if they had to go north, they'd go way out of their way to go around Samaria. I'm not going to go up there. I don't like them people. I don't care about them. I don't want nothing to do with Samaria. But one day Jesus looked at the disciples and he said, I must needs go through Samaria. And instead of going the long way around, Jesus went straight as a crow flies, straight through Samaria. And he met that woman at the well, a woman who had, a, again, a 
terrible reputation. Jesus said, you've been married five times. You're living with somebody now without being married to them. But he loved that woman. He told the gospel to that woman. And that woman was saved. She became a follower of Jesus. She went and got out of the other people in the city. And many of them became followers of Jesus. And I love the phrase there in John chapter 4 where the woman at the well, she says, I'll quote it to you. In John 4 and verse 42, she says, We know that this indeed is the Christ, the Savior of the world. I'm going to tell you, Jesus is the Savior of the world, isn't He? He can make disciples out of anybody. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter who your mom or daddy was. Doesn't matter who... It, and nothing matters. Rich or poor, Jew or Gentile, male or female, old or young. Jesus is the Savior of the world. My good friend, Brother Bobby Sellers, he's preaching in Trigg County this morning in a Baptist church there. But last Sunday, just a week ago, seven days ago, he was on a mission trip... Went way, said he was on an airplane, 13, 14 hours flying out of Las Vegas, flew way over to Manila in the Philippines. And went to a Baptist church they'd helped start over there and helped rebuild. And you know what he found? Over 100 people in that church who were followers of Jesus there in the Philippines. Jesus is the Savior of the Lord. Doesn't matter who you are, who you're from, where, none of that matters. If you'll come to that point in your life that you'll cry out to Jesus. You've not been following, you, you've never trusted Jesus. You've never been saved. Doesn't matter who you, you know, doesn't matter that your parents were Christians, maybe your grandparents were Christians. It's got to be personal, doesn't it? Nobody else can do it for you. I can't do it for you. You can't do it for me. It's got to be one on one. There's got to come to that point, if you're going to be saved, where you become a disciple of Jesus. I believe, I believe Jesus is a Savior. I believe He died and rose again. I want Him to be my Savior. I want Him to forgive me of my sin. I'm going to cry out to Jesus and ask Him to save me. Some of you have never done that. You've never become a follower of Jesus. Maybe some of you here, you say, well, preacher, I did that several years ago, but I've gotten so busy with life that as I, I try to follow Jesus, I feel Him in my heart. I know what's right and wrong, but Brother Ben, I just I fall in the ditch sometimes. I fall on the side of the road. Get back up. One of the ways we know we're a Christian is we've got that still, small voice. When we do make a mistake, when we do sin, God whoops us, God convicts us. God says, get up and keep on continuing on. Get up and press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Keep on following Jesus. So maybe you've never followed Jesus. Maybe you did, but you've gotten away from Him. It's time to get back up and follow Him. Maybe you've never been baptized. Maybe it's, I meet so many people who they've been saved. They know they need to be baptized, but they don't take that step. God wants you to identify with Him. Identify with His resurrection. Identify with the New Testament church. And so whatever the Lord has spoken to you about this morning, some of you need to be scripturally baptized. Maybe some of you need to become a part of this church. Some of you have gotten in the ditch. You need to get up. And start following Jesus. And some of you need to begin your journey following Jesus by being saved. You can be saved today. If the Lord's speaking to you, you felt His conviction on your heart, I'm going to pray. We're going to have a hymn of invitation. We can show you from the Bible how you can be saved. Step out. Walk down this aisle. Brother Ben, I want to be saved. I want to become a follower of Jesus. You can leave this building. We'll show you from the Bible how you can be saved today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you.